really independence, they talk about it a lot, right? So that's why I was asking. Um, and it seems like it's kind of like a like an incorporation for the entire Atropa ecosystem, you know, because like the, the ticker symbol is like the copyright symbol, I think. So it's like but the dev is like basically copywriting the ecosystem. And then like if there's ever an audit done later on by the SEC or something like that, they're basically what they're doing is they're making the Atropa ecosystem like SEC proof, right? And anything that's tied with like independence or the stay of proceedings, it's like um, if, if, the, if the SEC ever did like an audit on the Atropa ecosystem, all they would really have to do is look at the stay of proceedings. And that's, that's basically tied to like all of the, what the dev calls like in order uh, contracts basically like everything that that's like, like a safe investment I guess like more of like a seem like wants to be seen as an investment basically um, so if they ever do an audit they would just have to look at the state proceedings and they can go through the list of all the liquidity pools and just see that um, you know like the connections there are all supposed to be what they call in order and you know these are these are terms that the dev is putting out there right I don't know really what in order means to them or what it should mean but there's a lot of communication right now going through the chat logs about the state of proceedings and the independence token um, and how like it's basically supposed to defeat the SEC is what they say. Yeah, that's cool. I, I honestly don't think that we have an SEC issue for until the next cycle. If no, of course not. Yeah. I just think for like the, in the dev's mind, it's like a more, they're a long-term vision, right? So they're just making sure as they're setting all this stuff up that it's basically, you know, foolproof, I guess. It was just cool, kind of cool to read that stuff in there. Oh, for sure. Did you see the update on the, um, the court case though? No, no, tell me about it. I mean, it was basically, uh, gotta find the tweet. It was that same dude, the same lawyer guy that's been talking. Um, basically said that worst worst case 2026 pump, you know, until everything's like all the way wrapped up. He said that if in October Richard whoops him, then we're straight, but it could push to 2026. Push it to the 26th? 2026. <laughs> oh shit, 2026. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, in reality. I mean, it would just look like the XLP case, right? Like, so, but that's if we don't whip them in October. So, like, if the verbal hearing in October, you know, is, is goes good, and we get to just clarify what the fuck's going on and uh, wrap it up, then we're straight. But worst yeah. case, uh, they're, they're, um, bas they're basically asking them to like dismiss everything by yeah. October, right? I mean, they may, yeah. and they may or may not, I guess, or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And then the know. next, he said, like another court date, like. <laughs> Like important date was August or August twenty fifth, twenty twenty five or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it sucks. But it, it's a uh, it's what they want. It's what the SEC is trying to get. They're trying to drag it out so people get hurt. Right. Yeah, that does make sense. Shitty, but it makes sense, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah. That's what it is, though. I, I still think we pump. Like, I don't think everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, we don't pump." Like, nah. ETH is still gonna go up. Richard's still gonna get wealthy. He's still going to pump. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, Sami talks about it every damn day. Like, you know, if ETH hits 9K or whatever, then we have, like, over a billion dollars worth of money to be invested in the Pulse Fund, so. Yeah, and I told, I told my boss, I was like, dude, if, if he has a billion dollars that he's willing to just toss into Pulse Fund, he could pump, he could take, what, $2 million a day um, and <laughs> pump it for, like, two and a half years straight. <laughs> 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 like come on bro that's, that's a really nice thought and honestly yeah, it's all sack funds it's not like his like personal money or anything so like what the hell is exactly. he carrying yeah. yeah yeah so bullish on that so I don't care I don't really care about all this information it's just relevant because it just came out on the second today no seriously yeah it's just noise and you know people will flock to us later on as soon as the SEC shit's all over with honestly <sighs> not worried about that at all <laughs> But to, to circle back to Atropa, uh, another thing to discuss is the um, stay of proceedings and hegemony LP they talked about. Um, I started it. I guess I was the first person. So I was just wondering what the point of that is. They said that you would have like superpowers in the court if you had that LP for some reason. Oh, really? <laughs> if you were yeah. an LP holder for that? Yeah, if you hold the hegemony stay of proceedings LP, 
you have the like a superpower in the courts. So I just did that ASAP. And I was the first person. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, interesting. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I do have power in the courts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have some hegemony, so maybe I can throw a little bit of them in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. The stamp, like, the stamp like, proceedings token is wild because it's, it's literally connected to like everything. If you look at the front page of the holders, and I recommend everybody that's listening go go and do this. Like, look at the state proceedings. Go to the top holders. It's literally a, f a full page of like contracts. Or it was. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, there's been a, quite a few of those kind of tokens coming out. My wallet has not even made it to the first page, guys. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? It's <laughs> yeah, tough. It's tough, man. It is. Yeah. But yeah. So, no, it's like I've never, I've never seen anything like this ever in my life. Um, obviously, nobody has. Yeah. This entropy ecosystem's like you know, obviously blowing everybody's minds. But this this token state of proceedings is super fucking weird. Uh, it's literally just going to follow the entire market, and you know, but people that buy state of proceedings is just going to pump it exponentially. But obviously, it's like a it's more or less known, right? Nobody really knows what it, what it is or what it does, and it's it's brand new basically. So it's gonna take some time. But I think it started at like a one million market cap. I think it started at like a seven thousand dollar price. It was really really expensive right away. Mm, don't say expensive. That's pretend. Yeah, well, I mean relatively. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we know one hundred thirty one tokens. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, dollars for pretend. Uh, with the, in, in, the independent, with the independence token, there's only 20, right? So I think I'm mm -hmm. really get, able to get like point zero something tokens. Yeah. 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 That was another thing, too. I had a, one of my buddies ask me because I try to show a normie. <laughs> like, he doesn't know about crypto at all. And I try to, like, <laughs> you know. He, but he likes, like, technical deep diving, stuff like that. So I started to show him. Like, so, like, no knowledge about crypto at all. Just kind of, like, showing him the math behind everything, right? And he was asking what the contracts did like if these tokens are just shit coin and they just do things with lp or if they actually have mechanisms inside of the contract i couldn't really explain that uh, <clears> did you, have you ever looked at the tropa contract a little bit but i'm not savvy enough to understand what's going on so he, yeah this guy Riggs, he de he decompiled it and he said that there's like a lot of fucking weird shit going on there <laughs> like there's like a lot of weird terminology like they're, it like talks about like f like flight uh, like um, fuck. I wish he was in here right now because he has like a, he could talk about it all day. But they, it's like, you, you can you can tell that Atropa is like a game by reading the code. Like there's like flight capabilities and throwing fireballs and all types of shit. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, what else yeah. I found out is that the Solid X whale. Um, However, anybody feels about him, it doesn't matter. He's like a game, like casino. He's big in the tech space. Like he owns a lot of these these online casinos. He owns a lot of these online gaming companies and stuff like that. So that's why Chopa gets some better attention. I think that we could you know, move forward to talk to him because he's obviously a whale, right? Is he? A, is he a public person? <laughs> no, nah, not really. But no. You know, okay. yeah. I mean, I, I can bring him out, but it just depends on what the proposition uh -huh. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, as long as, like, we have, like, a connection to maybe just put something in this year later on, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, obviously, it's later on, right? We're not even close to the game, I don't think. Yeah, so they, the dev talked in the IRC recently about, like, you know, where we're at with all this stuff. Um, they, like, I mean, I got, I want to pull this up so I can actually give some good information. Um, game. So, usually, I go to the Atropa log. I use the, the find search tool a lot and I'd like to type in the word game and so when it pulls up any time that they say the word game uh, so they say proxying and tunneling and file sharing will come before any game functionality uh, somebody was wondering about um, like what would be an example of like doing an offense in the game like offending somebody else inside the game and so they were just saying like you know that all depends on how the nature of the game unfolds um the data structures will decide everything, and that proxying and tunneling and file sharing will come before any game functionality, um, and possibly before any connections back to the layer one. Uh, hmm. The dev said that they had, she's, the dev said that they have to replace the IRC first, 
which I'm not really sure what that means. He says version 1.0 of the layer 2 only needs to beat IRC and Telegram, but no tokens yet. And awesome. tokens and tokens on the layer 2 will not be the same concept at all. It's more like a certificate oriented data with the orientations coming first. There will be zero full duplication of the data sets at the lowest levels of the blockchain. So it's really not just the same. So basically what they're saying is like this layer two, there's not like going to be tokens on the layer two, but you're going to be able to like for the game, they say like these, some of the 666 tokens, you'll be able to send them to your opponent and it'll have some effect on them in the game. Murder. My, my, my interpretation of that, on. my interpretation of this is that like with the layer two, yeah, there's not going to be like tokens on the layer two, but like you'll be able to, you'll be able to see like what's in your wallet basically. And you'll be able to like sign something that sends like a kind of like a copy or like a like a you know saying that like okay I sent a portion of this to this person but it really didn't leave your wallet it just it just went into the layer two and so mm -hmm. I think maybe you'll be able to like affect people in some such a way something like that in the game I, that's just what I think I really have no idea about this shit what do you, what do you think yeah I mean I don't think that it's like like in a video game like hmm, I don't know it, it would be weird that if you sent it to an enemy that it would it would decrease or it would give them money and decrease their money. Right? I think that if you just bought a portion of that token, and that you had, like... For me, that's why I bought the murder token. Because I'm, like, in a video game. Which, I mean, murder is probably, like, the most powerful thing to do. So, <laughs> I, bought, I bought some of that. So, I doubt that if I sent it to a character to kill him, that I would just not have that token anymore and lose my investment. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, wouldn't, it doesn't leave your wallet. Like, the layer two, it, like... It's like a, you, sign a, you sign something, and it basically... It says that like, hey, I sent this to this person, but like, you it didn't like, actually leave your wallet and enter their wallet because there's no token transfers on the layer two. That's cool. But I, yeah. I was actually just talking to Pup too about uh, him replacing te Telegram because I was like, what happens if Telegram disappeared tomorrow? We'd all be fucked. <laughs> so I think they can see yeah. that already. The Telegram, like uh, the feed. No, I just mean Telegram in general. Like we would all be fucked. Like <laughs> we wouldn't be able to uh, talk to each other anymore. I guess what else would we use? Um, Twitter, and then Discord, if Twitter got knocked off. Discord? Oh yeah, Discord. Yeah. But if they got away Is with that... Telegram, they would get away with Discord too. Who's going to shut down Telegram? I'm just saying, dude, the government has <laughs> amazing powers. <laughs> so it's freedom of speech. Telegram is also freedom of speech. For sure, but I mean, look what they're doing right now. Though. They're attacking freedom of speech. So we would have to completely riot to stop all that. And they're hoping that we do that. So what China does, and all they do is sit them in their house. Right. But anyway, just bullish on the Atropa dev actually pushing for some more freedoms. So like an alternative to, you know, IRC alternative to Telegram. Smart. And then building it on Pulsion is even better. Okay, so that's how you interpreted that. So I didn't really understand what they were saying when they were like, we need to beat the IRC and Telegram first. Because I guess yeah, they're they right. They did create their own IRC. Oh. Yeah, because then we can all talk oh. on that. Be completely decentralized, like all the way. And uh, no one can touch us. Damn. That's fucking sick. Okay. Okay, now I understand this better. Thank you. Yeah, they're so building that. I think that's kind of like sort of the email service that they were talking about. You know, Rachel has always talked about uh, how the government can read our emails. So if we get to use like a IRC slash email service, pretty bullish on uh, privacy. Right, right. Damn, man, that, that is actually pretty damn cool. So now we wouldn't have we wouldn't have to worry if the government wants to shut shit down. Oh, they want to shut it down. They're just trying to figure out how to do it without causing riots. Because that's the biggest thing for them. If we band together, they can't control us. So, like, if they can slowly rip away freedom, like, little piece by piece, then no one freaks out until it's all gone. Yeah, I feel like that's what they're doing now. Like, with all these fucking protests at every college or whatever, they're going to make, they're going to, like, throw some laws out there. They're like, yeah, you guys can't, like, protest anymore like this. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yes. But... I don't know how long that takes or what, what they... Because there's going to be something serious, that like seriously malicious that they do where we're, we're all like, well, hold on, wait, <laughs> you know?
Yeah. Oh, that definitely makes sense. We had a couple new speakers up here. What's up, guys? The verse, hex equals MC squared. What's going on? Man? What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Hey, Chris, what's up, man? Hey, not much, man. I'm at the gym right now. Just uh, want to just jump in this chat real quick. Try and get caught up with the trope. I'm not going to lie. I've been on shit shitcoining for a lot. <laughs> so, I see you, bro. I see you. Yeah. So, um, jump in on what Almighty was saying. Just to fill in some gaps. Um, so, Vital Buterin put out a huge warning a couple weeks ago saying that um, Ethereum needs to be quantum resistant. There's a pro another project called Quantex that has this added layer of protection for EDM compatible chains so that if there's a quantum hack, it won't shut down the entire blockchain. Now, when it comes to this new chat, the big thing you gotta understand is if they were going to hit any piece of software, and without getting too far in the nerd shit, they're gonna use some sort of quantum hack, whether it's on the power grid or towards a blockchain, and that's how they're gonna shut it down. So that's the biggest issue that we're seeing right now. And in my opinion, that's why I think Maria or whoever the hell is doing all this stuff is trying to develop because there needs to be this alternative. And through the shutdown of a lot of these ecosystems and systems, whether it's the internet or a company or a blockchain or Telegram, they're going to offer the solution. The solution is going to be the CBDC. The solution is going to be some sort of centralized corporation. And that's the big end game. And that's why we need something like full chain. So that was just, just throwing that out there for you guys. That's some scary stuff, man. I don't like to hear those four letters. If I could, if I could add something to that. Please do. The, there's a new messenger, so messenger system um, called Orion by, uh, damn, now I forgot his name, but it's a quantum encrypted system that cannot be shut down. Really? It's, it's in beta right now. I actually got on, although there's not much to do on it yet. Um, it's going to be something you have to pay for. Um, but nobody can change anything. And and the guy who started it, um, Edward, um, I'm, I'm losing it because I wasn't expecting to talk about this. <laughs> um, he's big into all this stuff, and he actually broke a lot of the codes. So he's able to predict the prime numbers, which are what all our, our uh, encryption is based on. And his thing is based above that. So he started this thing up. It's pretty interesting. I'm going to put a, a link. I'm going to send it to Zach to your Twitter as soon as I pull it up. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, I'd like to check that out. I think I remember what right. uh, Richard talking about. The only thing to replace crypto is quantum, quantum computers and computing and stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah, and the other thing I want to throw out there, I, I'm always researching stuff, and so I'll give you guys a little inside scoop on what the next big narrative is after crypto. So we had the gold run up, then we had the internet boom, then we had the dot-com boom, then we had the blockchain boom, which we're living out right now. The next one's going to be artificial intelligence. And the big thing that I'm seeing with a lot of these new chains that you see with BitSensor Tau, Cubic, AI Power Grid, is that they're creating a machine learning capable model that can live on top of a blockchain and has the ability to replace engineers, scientists, and also do high intensive labor skill jobs depending on our, on our uh, robotics uh, component. And so the main point I'm trying to get across is with the threat of quantum hacks and this new AI revolution coming in, there's going to have to be a lot of upgrades and a lot of additions to Pulse Chain. And I see that what's happening with the Tropa and what Maria's building and what other builders are bringing onto this chain it's going to be a really, really great solution to all the other centralized control blockchains. So, you know, some things that we might see being built out besides just like a payment processor or our payment solution would probably be some sort of proof of work component. I don't know if you guys have been following the insider guy, but I've been talking to him like a little bit about stuff, but I've been going too deep. And, you know, MakerDAO is coming out with like a proof of stake and a proof of work blockchain. And in my opinion, because they're adding that proof of work component, 
it's allowing them AI capabilities. And I'm still researching whether or not Tolshin has the ability to have some sort of AI built on top of that. The proof of stake is energy efficient, but doesn't produce enough energy to run and train these models. So um, I'm not sure what Rich is going to do with that in the future, but it's probably going to be something that's going to be needed on top of being quantum resistance. So, but I don't want a crazy rant. Hey there, bro. That's what the whole point of what we're doing. Go on your rant. <laughs> well, yeah, man. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, um, the the other thing I wanted to ask ask you guys, uh, the discovery token. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even really jump into it. I, I ate like crazy, and I've been trying to catch up with it. Well, what's the main I, what's what's the main thing with discovery? And then what's the main point with no nukes? Because it seems like no nukes is paired up with like a lot of these new tokens. No, no nukes. Yeah, so no basically nukes. Discovery is uh, it's another one of the 666 tokens, right? And so the 666 tokens, we know that will have some in-game utility. Uh, basically, you'll use them uh, to either send them to an opponent and it'll have some effect on them in the game. Uh, the reason why people got so bullish on Discovery at the very beginning was because the dev said that people that hold Discovery are going to have it, um, very obnoxious uh, in-game powers, basically. Um, so basically, people are just like, you know, speculating on the fact that, you know, when the game launches, people are going to really want to use this token because it's going to give you really strong powers over your opponents. Um, and it also had really, really thick LP, right? So all the 666 tokens are usually spoken by the dev as very high risk, not investable. Uh, and this is because uh, when they when they get launched, right, they're tied to no nukes, but they usually have a, an LP with like a thousand dollars in it, right? And all a hundred percent of the supply is in the liquidity pool, so anybody can just like toss in like a couple hundred bucks at launch and get like ten percent of the supply right away. And that's why the devs said these are really not investable tokens; they're just going to be used in the game later on. Um, but the difference with this discovery token, and why I personally got so bullish on it, was because it started with like four hundred thousand dollars in the liquidity pool, right? <laughs> And it, it just started growing, and I noticed that nobody could really buy in at the beginning and get a really big chunk of the supply. So basically, I was one of the first buyers, and I, I still I only have about one percent of the supply myself, um, and nobody else has even any more than that, right? If you look at all the other tokens in the Atropa ecosystem, you know sometimes somebody could have you know five, six, up to ten percent of a supply of a token. Uh, just because of the way that they're launched, right, with a, a small small liquidity pool and things like that. Uh, so I think that Discovery may be um, a little bit more insulated from people that will have, like, large wallets in the future that could dump and hurt the price. And obviously we, we are expecting the in-game functionality to be um, pretty powerful as well. So that's why we're bullish on Discovery. Okay. Makes sense. Um, okay. Hey, thanks for the explanation. And the other one I was also looking at, um, I think it's called like, is it leprosy? Does that ring a bell? Sounds like it's a disease. Yeah, le leprosy. Leprosy is another good token. So that's another token that's going to be used in the game. Um, but I, and actually, I'm, I'm going to pull something up in the IRC really quickly because the last time the dev talked about leprosy, they said something important. I just want to remember. That's what like that a was. whole different ecosystem in the ecosystem. Like you have like the no notes ecosystem. Everything's spread in no and you have like the leprosy go where everything's spread out. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, and then so they join like... together in some sort of LP. So, like, you can get into that ecosystem with it. I think with no nukes, I'm not tripping. Um, so listen, so the, the dev says that the game functionality will not be tied to value in any way aside from the leprosy token having the most rare effects. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, dude. That makes me nervous because I'm pretty sure leprosy is like a crazy disease. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you send it to the enemy and their legs fall off. <laughs> uh, bro, you know, I'm gonna buy a bunch of that token. I'm gonna send it across to all these walls and get everybody leprosy. Screw it, we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, I hey. mean, it just seems like. Go ahead, sorry. Well, I was going to say, uh, no nukes is also mintable. They can mint one at a time. Just FYI. 
So that's why you see the... Yeah, so Nonux is publicly mintable, right? So anybody can run the public mint function for Nonux, and only the dev receives the mint, right? So the reason why they do this is because it can be like a community-based thing. They can ask the community, like, hey, somebody go... <laughs> somebody go mint me some Nonux, right? So they, the dev wants to launch a new token. Somebody mints the dev a bunch of this Nonux token, and then they burn 100% of the supply. Uh, with the Nonux and the new token together. Um, it's just, it's a way to bolster the ecosystem. It's a way to, you know, lift the prices on certain tokens like they did on BFF recently. They attached a couple different tokens to that, I believe, I think prostitution and something else. But we died, we saw a huge pump on BFF after they did that because they had some tokens minted and they paired it up. Um, but yeah, so that's a public function that people can call um, pretty much. <coughs> that was also frustrating. That's cool. As you saw them create a token to pump uh, BFF and then yeah, nuke down again. <laughs> we were so close, dude. I, I sent right. it to 6K and I was like, all right, let's get, let's get there, baby. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was right behind you. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we'll get there, man. It's really. Huh? Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. So, I just want to ask another quick question. So, last time um, I was digging around the ecosystem, we were talking about BFF getting to 8K. Is that still the price goal? Price yeah, that's that's the target for sure. And then the dev is planning to add a ton of liquidity all through the ecosystem uh, with BFF, just like they did stay at proceedings. So, uh, Chris, I know you've probably been away for a little bit, but uh, there's a new token out called Stay of Proceedings. And what the dev did is like literally tied it to like, I mean, the whole first page on the scanner are all liquidity pools. It's all contracts. Um, and basically, they they said something about how the stay of proceedings is going to be like a model for what will happen to BFF after they get to gets to AK. Um, but it's basically just connecting to certain tokens throughout the ecosystem uh, for like a balancing effect, right? Keeping prices stable, things like that. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, no, I, I like this, and I saw the uh, the diagrams that Almighty was talking about. I think Pulsar posted or whatever, and. To me, what it seems like is trying to develop uh, thicker price floors by building out these ecosystems. I know the, uh, yeah. the, game, the gamify component is like a cool way to get people to engage, and I hope I hope Maria builds the game. Now, the last question I have: Dysnomia. You say layer two. Is this going to be? Do you know if this is going to be like a layer two, like Optimism and Arbitrum, or is it just a layer two that just lives on on top of Pulse Chain? You know, I'm not really sure. I guess I like I wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. Um, I think the guy that's joining the chat right now, then he may be able to answer that for you a little bit better. Thank than God, but we've got Einstein here now. Yeah, what's up, Ben? What's going on, guys? How's everyone? Doing good. Man. <laughs> just trying to keep this conversation alive. Waiting for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's good that we keep this going because people need to learn. Um, what's, what, what, what's been covered? I, I was gone. So, uh, so basically, uh, Chris from the verse, he had a question about dysnomia in terms of like, how is it a layer two? Is it in a layer two, like Arbitrum is, or is it a layer two? Like it just sits on top of the blockchain or like, you know, can you just explain that a little bit? Uh, I, I don't think we know yet. <laughs> But <laughs> okay, that's what I thought too. Well, well, it's it, it's it's tough, right? Because I like nobody understands what they're talking about in the Fosdom uh, triple dipping video that they have out. But from what I could gather from it, it's it's pretty much all the quote unquote production level tokens, which means the token that is mostly LP is going to almost act as a pole where. Uh, each pole is going to play a, a role in the encryption model. So they, they got into the nuclear tunneling where um, that is the, the most organic kind of encryption model that you can have uh, versus SHA-256. But it's all stuff that we don't understand. But what I think is going to happen is they're going to use every single one of the tokens uh, and there's going to be transactions and volumes uh, and, and, and data that flows through each token to uh, help with the encryption model. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what they have in store for it and how it's going to work at all. But 
what I what I'm seeing with state of proceedings and uh, independence is they are essentially incorporating uh, as a, as a company and, and a legitimate company, and this goes along with the fact that they're moving to to Portland um, to to set up an office and stuff. But with uh, the, I, I think what they mentioned and and what you know they they wanted people to realize is the copyright and the the copyright token, which is independence token, is is like if someone were to come and and try to duplicate the system. Or were to say I am four one four, or I, I don't know. Like someone were to be an imposter and come in, but then they don't have this copyright token attached to their ecosystem, where you have it attached to quite literally everything. And then if we think about what what that means for like a plugin, for example, for somebody coming into the ecosystem that's fresh, if you're going from PDI into a Tropa. Now the easiest route into the entire ecosystem is from PDI to Atropa. Uh, you can go straight from Atropa into Independence, or you can go into Down, from Down into Independence, and then stay of proceedings, and then you're quite literally everywhere. So it it made it it was a, a really quick shortcut that they've created, um, and I've never seen a token like Independence before in my life because it's it's. It's attached to something extremely liquid, which is state of proceedings. And it's going to have this, this weird trampoline like effect where whenever the market pulls down, state of proceedings is obviously going to pull down. And so will, um, and so will independence as a result because it's heavily bonded. But when the market goes up, any buy into independence is going to pump the hell out of that price. Uh, and it, it, it's extremely liquid at this point. It's got a lot of LP with down and and Atropa and and stay, which is attached to everything. So, um, and it's only twenty supply. So it's 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 probably going to get upwards of you know millions of dollars in terms of price. Just like I, re- I remember being here with uh, the the Mant- Mantissa when it was fifty five k and. 414 in the IRC said, uh, this is the Mantissa. It's got, it's only got 55 holders and it's the best one. And everyone kind of, you know, they, they, they shrugged that off cause they were talking about a bunch of other shit that they just rambled on for, uh, for they were rambling for hours. But, um, that went from 55 K to over a million. So I, I see something very similar with this one. What's the supply um, of Mantissa? Mantissa is one supply, but it didn't have the same uh, liquidity bondage that this one does. It, it, it was heavily paired to a bunch of other stuff, but they didn't have 414 actively putting holdings that they have in the treasury to then pair it in liquidity with independence and then start buying independence themselves. And so the, 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 so stay is not connected. I'm sorry. So independence is is connected to a trope and down, but stay is not. Correct. Right, and stay stay is basically just connected to kind of like the the deeper altcoins inside a tropa. Yeah, if if you think of a tropa as so, okay, whatever was attached to stay of proceedings are tokens that um, can quite literally stay because they're deemed safe. So. If, if you have like Japanese teddy bear, if you have a uh, host, you have uh, Liberty, you have SIM, you have all of these tokens that don't have uh, any risk to the network. So if one of them were to some, for some reason, just completely nuke and tank the price, uh, whether it be like a, a significant holder or whatever, uh, just nukes the price, the state of proceedings isn't going to move because well, that, it's, that won't happen. Yeah, so it's, right. it's too insignificant for um, the move. And so... Can I take um, a step back here for a minute? Like, I think you're going way over the heads of, of most of the people that are, are here right now. I just have to sure. say, like, I love you, Ben. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Like, I, I, I follow your words closely. Um, but I want to just step back and go, like, to the layer two and, like, and the overall point. Like, um... 
But I think right now, what what's going on with what James is doing is is literally building like a secure, immutable system um, that no nobody can take down. Not even the SEC. Like uh, he reiterated that like multiple times in the chat today, um, and did make reference to the layer two, um, and also said that we haven't seen any tokens yet. Let me look at this. He says, uh, uh, version 1.0 of the layer 2 only needs to beat IRC and Telegram. No tokens yet. Uh, and then the next post, I believe, was, and tokens on the layer 2 won't be the same concept at all. Um, and I got more stuff saved here, but, um, Basically, he, he said that somebody, I think it was Coffee, asked if, if we were the seed investors um, towards the layer two. Um, and so that's that's the concept in my mind. Like we, uh, right now, the, there's one use case being built and he has a huge vision uh, going on for the second layer that like we really haven't even begun to, uh, to get to yet like the a lot of the tokens that have been launched will be um beneficial to uh to holders uh like you like now is the opportunity is kind of what i'm getting at but also don't expect that like you can just sit back and and um i mean you you probably could um just get in now and and you know, go away and come back and be fine. But like, we really haven't seen anything yet. He's, he's moving to Portland. Um, he's setting up a studio. He's wanting to move away from the IRC. He's wanting to go into a uh, rich chat. Um, he, the, like there's explosions ready to, um, take place. He's seeing like tremendous upside potential and the whole system, um, and so, like, for, for, for people that don't want to or can't follow the ins and outs of these liquidity paths and, um, and ratios that we're talking about, like, they're, like what, what Ben and Zach are talking about is, like, you can get involved um, in, in smaller, you know, in a, in a circuit, in a circle, um, without having to... Um, completely understand everything and we haven't seen anything yet like it's, it's going to um, a lot of things aren't actually determined yet and what, what mo what's most important is that we onboard and so at the risk of like losing people um, because it's, it's so tremendously complicated um, I think we need to just like focus on the fact that like um, so much has already happened there's a tremendous amount of power behind this system um, you don't have to understand everything. Uh, there's some core tokens you can just get involved with, um, and, um, and, and get yourself exposure, um, to the whole system, but it's going to evolve. So as much as you can, um, try and pay attention and know that like, we're just getting started. Well, yeah. And, and yeah, those were some good words. And um, I think the, the, the main thing to remember here is I've been following this shit since the beginning. I've been reading, I, I've, I've read the entire chat log and obviously I don't understand all of it. Um, and there's a lot more that is, is coming that we, we really don't get, including the layer two. What I do know is that this is a, a, a system that grew completely organically, completely decentralized, um, all through this silly little IRC chat log. Um, and it's grown to a point now where it's completely taken over Pulse Chain, where if, if 414 wanted to keep the, the price of Pulse low forever, they probably could just by recycling money. And the, the, this is it. Like, this is the most significant thing you'll, you'll find in crypto because we all believe that Richard would create this amazing chain and he did, he delivered. And this is like, if you give a NASA scientist who's been on computers since six years old, 
the world's best blockchain at ge the Genesis period. Like this, this is what happens when you give someone that kind of opportunity and someone also who has a lot of money having made it in hex already. So this is, this is something people won't get. You won't fully understand this. And this is why the devs said to, to uh, just buy a tropa and teddy bear for the time being. But if we think about what's occurring as sent as, as banking, as the banking system that we have now, where you have a certain amount in terms of tre a treasury holding that is, is, is put to, to use in different parts of the ecosystem. And what we know now is, is the, the, or what we use it for now is for the economy. If you want to stimulate certain parts of the economy, you have to shift capital towards those different parts. And so what the dev is, is, is wanting us to pay attention to is how they're shifting capital and putting it towards certain things. Because when you're holding token A, and then you see that the treasury is placing focus on token B, well, now you might sell token A for token B, you experience a short-term pump, and then they pair it to something else, and then you can exit. But what that, what, what that does is you now have a, a better distribution on token A. And so this is why the, the teddy bear, the down, and the atropa distribution is so good, because everyone kind of start just got sucked into this ecosystem and swapped all their down, and, and they're making a lot more money because the treasury is allowing them to, but it, it decreased that distribution. And so these tokens at the end of the day are going to be the best distributed tokens with all liquidity, which how can you ever argue that's illegal? And how could you not invest into something like that? Because there is zero risk in terms of the dev selling everything and you losing all your money and the code is verified. Like this makes it so that it doesn't matter what 414 says. You can love them or hate them. You could, you could disagree with everything that they're doing. Th the price is going to go up because it's all attached to PDI. Yeah, we're seeing um, a structure that's never been seen before uh, in crypto, especially well, with all the burnt liquidity. If you just think about how much money Hexakins made when Hex was at 55 cents, well, what if at 55 cents, Richard used the OA to attach all of that liquidity to something else and stabilize the price, which 414 has done multiple times? Well, what, what if he does that with ETH? What if he attaches, uh, what, what if he bonds his 60% or 70% holdings of Pulse Chain with his large holdings of ETH now, instead of just dumps all of it into his ecosystem? And now you have Pulse forever cheap, forever moves up with Ethereum, and there's forever 700 million, actually it'll, it'll probably be uh, like 1.4 billion in liquidity for people to just test it out. Like you're going to have yeah. a, a, a full blown other layer one. That's a literal fork of, of ETH that has this huge bridge of liquidity. I don't know why a lot of people would. are figuring that out now. A yeah, lot of so. people are figuring that out now. We are basically vampiring ETH under the radar at this point. Yeah. I, 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 I I'd say that's the smartest move to do. And Richard is no numb nuts. So, uh, I like if if we have that, and then we have this playground of what four one four is doing, and all the noobs, I guess, just buy teddy bear because they see it's going up like crazy. You'll probably get a better return in teddy bear, uh, short term, but long term, like that capital is going to eventually figure out what the hell is going on. Everyone here right now learning about this is just too early like it, you're actually too early because you should you shouldn't be taking money out of this system until like 15 to 20 years from now <laughs> because it's 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 probably going to do something similar to bitcoin it's going to go up it's going to go down but eventually this is the way that the world goes and um it's it's all on uh our radars right now which is crazy That's a good ass point. I didn't really think about him attaching ETH to it at all. You said a lot of people have been thinking about that, but I don't, that, I don't think people are not thinking about that at all. 
know there's a there's a lot of cases of that at this point. I mean, when Richard talked about the PRCs and people shrugged it off, um, there was tremendous alpha there. Like, just go and compare some of the charts with like, um, and you can see based on the way the bots work on this side, um, the, it's not the same as the way they work on on any other chain. Uh, it's pretty incredible how they're literally extracting value, even if if um, no users are are doing it themselves. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I I I wouldn't bank or I wouldn't bet against Maria um, because it's it's almost like every other month we see this huge pullback. And then next thing you know, oh, we're at all-time highs again. And for the people who are, I guess, charting or showing charts on PDI and, and Teddy Bear uh, that you see on Twitter and stuff like that, um, newsflash, guys, like, that's how bonded liquidity works. It's, it's a beta play on the natives being Pulse Chain, and Pulse Chain is a beta play on ETH, and ETH is a beta play on, on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has gone from seventy four thousand to its low at, at fifty local low at fifty six k. What do you think that that's going to do to the price of Teddy Bear? Of course, it's going to come down. Now that that actually plays to our benefit in a bull market because the the same occurs on the flip side. If it's a beta play to that degree, um, the downside it'll it'll be the same on the upside. And so, what what four one four is trying to teach us is when you go down this rabbit hole of beta plays, you end up at, at something that you is, isn't tied to exterior assets um, and is only tied to, to the things that are in the ecosystem that you can make a lot of money on. Like in, on paper, you make a lot of money until you realize that you don't. But the, the burn liquidity here and, the, and the, the paths to get out of the ecosystem are thick enough. And I don't think that's ever been done before. Um, so again, I, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to tax us for this either because they'll, uh, they'll try to find a way to, to tax us for this. But like they said, I, I, I don't see a way um, that they can because it's all just tokens attached to tokens. It's not like you're going from a stable coin into, into something else. Yeah, it's the beauty of the way um, Plan Four is doing it. Like I, that, I, that I've never seen anybody take into account before. Um, being able to use the own funds and lock them up. Um, I mean that that can't be reiterated enough. Like how much of his own personal funds that he's put into uh, this system specifically I don't think to make. Well, I don't think I don't think they've put a lot in, because when they did that buy of two hundred and fifty thousand TSFI, it was just from their Atropa holdings that they created out of thin air, essentially. Yeah, every, so, everything's proof money. It all, like they created the I, value from PDI, and then from there they send out just a, a bunch of just proof money, and then it all equals real money because it's attached to something. Like well, that's even better. That's even better in, in a way, in my mind. Um, because he could have just extracted that value. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't no value. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it was value. Uh, he he well, could have taken it back out, right? Uh, here's maybe he the biggest. Here's the biggest point, biggest thing to consider when trying to analyze whether this is a scam or not. Is this is a smart individual, a very very smart individual, smarter than any of us could ever even fucking imagine. If this is a smart person, they could have, okay, there's a few points. They could have extracted a ton of value before they ever came out um, and revealed their identity. But even then, we probably would have figured it out because of the earlier James video. B, they have so much more to win in this than to lose because they will be a billionaire if this works out for them. If, if, the, well, if it doesn't, my point was really like before we got a little derailed was that none of this works 
um, period, unless it's actually immutable and in order, right? Um, we have to set up a system that beats all um, of the international cartels. Uh, I can't. I can't think of the word, um, uh, hypocrisy, it, it, for lack of uh, a better word. Like, there's an absolute reason why Richard is doing this and why James is doing this. Like, their money is, like, not even, has no worth if it all collapses. And that's what I'm so excited by in terms of what James is doing. Um, is because he's actually, like, committed to creating a system that is, like, uh, not only immutable, but indestructible. Um, beyond what anybody else is trying to do. Um, by far. Like, I don't think, you, I, I don't think that, you know, anybody that's paid attention could, could disagree with that. And I, I think it, like, is the really important point. Like, especially for onboarding, like, there's really no safer place um, to play. And like you said, you know, in this, and even better, this may be a 15, 20, 50, 100, 200 year, um, 500 year vision. And the longer that, that vision stretches out, the better. And the more it aligns with Richard, you know, um, <clears throat> what's killing us right now is uh, greed and fear, and they're the exact same thing. There's, it's not a greed or fear index, you know. It's greed and fear index. Like right now, everybody's in greed and fear. They have a short-term perspective. They, they're like, what? How, who? You know, I gotta sell first before somebody else sells. You know, it, and that's just part of the the cycle, and that's you know exactly where we're at. Um. And what is going to benefit us most is looking long term. I mean, that was the intent of the of the fifteen year stake to begin with, and it and it has the math to back it. Um, the tech is already there. What we need is consciousness to catch up. Like we need people to understand. We need to onboard, and we need to lengthen our our perspective. Like, is that? Well, imagine. Imagine the excitement uh, whenever they came over with the U.S. dollar and creating the, the dollar and, you know, the level of, you know, whenever all that was going down, like, it had to be a long-term vision, right? And, you know, yes, it got corrupted and it got taken over, um, but benevolent forces of the blockchain are benevolent forces of the blockchain, but 414 can mean two things, right? You know, it's the bringer of heavenly light or an angel or the destroyer of worlds. And I think that they're trying to show us that the more people that we onboard, because regardless of what happens, there's going to be, you know, it can, it can go one of two ways. The money's going to come here. The people are going to come here. It's just a matter of who gets wealthy again this time, right? Is it the right type of people that are going to do benevolent and bring on and bring more benevolent people? Or is it just going to be the rich that just continue to step in and become more, you know, more powerful in this, in this uh, scenario in which, you know, at least this time we have the ability to onboard. We have the, maybe not the, you know, time is of the essence, of course, but I think 414 is acting benevolently. I think 414 knows more than what they lead on. And I think that there are breadcrumbs that are left for people to find to where then they can go dig in with, you know, and do their research. And, you know, some things that have yet to be disclosed or, you know, actual intent. Yeah, I mean, like you said, we see a lot of it going into the uh, and being burnt. Um, the, the value of, you know, the value of being able to use an illiquid asset and make it like an illiquid asset that pumps, it, a liquid asset that pumps as if it's illiquid because it's building its own liquidity. <laughs> with an illiquid asset, right? So there's like 20 million in like value over there, but it's still, it can still pump as if it's illiquid, um, if that makes any sense, because it's literally bought up so much PDI, and we know that utilizing the same contracts, the same PDI contract, and the same other contract, when you're running, when using Block Atlantica and this AI technology, which is allowing us to, which is allowing them to mint die, 
we would not be able to do that unless the blockchain or the code itself, you know, was telling us to. So it's it's different than the U.S. dollar because they can just put their foot on the pet, put their foot on the pedal, and mint as much as they want into thin air, out of thin air. At least we're not doing that out of thin air. I think consensus would agree that we deserve more liquidity on the blockchain. How do you do that? Well, I mean, unlike the stock market, you know, the stock market's liquidity to market caps, make, you know, they kind of make sense. Richard, with what Richard did with uh, Hex was he front run, he, he's front running the ability to um, mint value, but have it backed by something that there's a, a community, a consensus of, of value there, right? And then utilizing AI written by man, but governed by code, uh, gives them, gives us and him or whoever, the, uh, the, the AI practically tells us how much we can mint. There's a reason why it stopped at 22 billion uh, between all these other assets. There's a reason why the number eight keeps flying around. We know that there is a snapshot of $8 billion in value worth of hex for the maker chain, which is going to be a copy of, you know, a consensus of proof of work with the state. But even then, they're not minting die. They're minting wrapped die. They're minting wrapped USDT. They're minting wrapped versions. So they're creating a more decentralized die that's going to be minted on a chain that's going to be sent somewhere to then be minted and backed at the same time. Um, all the while siphoning U.S. dollars off chain with actual real world associations with businesses and things like that. And that's why he's pointing out the fact of being able to tie an OX address to a YouTube or an OX address to just, you know, other things, right? Because that's how you onboard the masses without them even realizing it. And it's a brilliant way to be able to actually take US dollars and move it off chain. Um, if you look, I posted something about, you know, Gnosis Safe at one time, or, you know, a few years ago, it had 20 billion US dollars, but it's, it was locked at the time. And I think that's because they were waiting for something to come along to where they could use that and actually mint that 20 billion, but have it backed at the same time. Um, that 20 billion alone would peg all three assets to a dollar and they would be, um, they wouldn't peg though, right? Because you know, I'm not believing the whole peg thing, but they could reach them all. I think it needs about a billion in each one um, to get to a dollar, but they would essentially all have then like four X, you know, over a dollar in all of them. So the question, I mean, the question still remains, you know, <clears throat> how much are they missing? We do know that they went to super chain. Uh, super chain itself is a, is world coin. Um, world coin is connected to all the layer twos. Uh, we do know Polygon has ag layer. This is privacy. We know Hopper, uh, which is on Gnosis, live on Gnosis, allows a, it's another privacy type function using RPCH. Um, this is all, this is all on, uh, on Gnosis at the moment. We do know that Spark launched on Gnosis. But it's very hard to find it because I believe that they were utilizing this function of being able to have the hop our network. And you can like on like so you can still use MetaMask, or you had to use MetaMask, but I was running this test last night to where I used it was this website. I'm not saying anyone would do this, but y'all can I tested it with a like a random wallet and I connected to it at first and it's called like derp. Like if you Google derp uh, MetaMask test. So when you do it, at first, it'll pop up your IP address, your location, and everything. And then whenever I, uh, I ran through, through Docker, which is a terminal, into something called Tunnel, and used something, a snippet of code from the actual Atropa contract, that then, whenever I went to the Dirk network and tried to do this, it, could, it couldn't connect to me. Um, uh, there's something called Protofire, which is... Uh, essentially uh, a fork of Gnosis, uh, the same type of thing that doesn't even say it works on Pulse Chain, but clearly does. Sorry, that's a lot of information. I'm super excited. <laughs> hey, uh, Pulse Chains. Um, hey, just real quick. One thing that I was researching is that Ethereum apparently has like a privacy layer for corporations and it's been hidden from the public. I'm not sure how true it is yet, and I haven't really dove into it since I was main pointing for a couple weeks. 
But it might be something interesting in that right. because if Paul Shane's a fork of Ethereum, I wonder if Gabby yeah, H had some sort of play or if it's on Paul Shane, but I mean, hopefully that gives you something to look at. Yeah, so there's, a, there's a weird yeah, there's a weird token called Charts for You. And now if you go to Charts for You on Ethereum, it'll say like once you actually run the code and look at the code, you can freeze tokens to have them unlock at a later date. And there's like secret tokens that are attached to it. And you have to be holding a certain amount of these tokens to open up this layer, which sounds a hell of a lot like um, the Atropa bonding and things like that. So I, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, you're definitely onto something, but yeah, if y'all go look at this, this chart, the number four and then you on chain on Ethereum, there's definitely a fork of it, but over on Pulse, I believe it's called something completely different. But like some of the functionalities is, you know, free tokens, unlock, um, and then mint. And uh, I think you can actually mint tokens yourself utilizing these contracts. Um, I tried, and then what it, it prompted me to do like some other weird stuff where it gave me, like, told me to like give me my Telegram name and that the block SEC, which is the uh, this really cool um, functionalities to be able to launch test. Test, uh, test contracts, simulations, and all this stuff, you can fork a network in the blink of an eye. So, I mean, in my opinion, like that's exactly what they had to have done to, uh, you know, to literally fork a network at any point in time, take a snapshot at any time. And, you know, I think that, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot more work that was going on behind the scenes. And, but they're also showing me that it's all open source. So if anyone can do it, just like the die, Anyone can run the front end of SDI. Anyone can run the front end of these of anything that's happening on Pulse with the knowledge and the capabilities. But the fact of the matter is, anyone can run it. You just have to know how. You just you have to go in and do it. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm no dev, but I mean, I can read the functions and be like, this is really interesting, right? And I think, I think what Torin touched on earlier, it's like, oh yeah, okay. me. I think it goes deeper than even what I've. I think it goes even deeper than what I've uncovered. I mean, I even if I'm five percent correct, we're going to be, we're all going to be going. Man, I wish I would have onboarded more people. Uh, there was a fork of uh, something called My Finance, so it, it was a fork of Dai, right? And it literally was. They had all the. They were using Balancer to back the value of it, and you can see that it only be pegged once. In November, it dropped to 75 cents, and then as of a few days ago, it recovered and is back up to like 98, 98 cents, which is around, I think it was $27 million in uh, stables spread all over the place, but 16 million of it was sitting on Polygon. Um, so, um, yeah, that was like, I thought that was interesting because then you know that a, a fork of die can be back and collateralized. And not only if it depegs, it can recover, right? So, I mean, it had 182 different assets backing it, which is, I'm sure is a stretch. But I think that they were just trying to prove that it can be worked. It was copied onto Pulse as well, right? And it seemingly, you know, even though the value on Ethereum is dead, like they rugged it, but it seems like they're, also, they're still using it on Pulse Chain too. Um, because uh, we were like, man, we're like, let's go buy out the fucking... Because the QDAO was the DAO that was like behind it, uh, QI DAO. And then, like I said, it, most of the value was sitting on Polygon at that time, which was the exact same amount of money of DAI and other tokens that were being minted and being utilized on Superchain, around $16 million. I mean, coincidence? Possibly. Am I crazy? Maybe. But... Um, the, eight, the number eight keeps popping up everywhere. Eight billion this, 88 billion this. Um, it's just, uh, I think the breadcrumbs are there. Um, but yeah, it's it's ultimately up to the rest of y'all to, to and, and myself to continue to dig so we can at least do the research and do it together because no one person could uncover any of this without being tried or tested or and uh, you know looked into by some of the smartest people on the, you know, that I know of on, on the blockchain, which happens to be the people on Pulse Chain, uh, in my opinion. Um, well, it's kind, and, it's kind of a wild because west. The way that, it's kind of a wild west because mm -hmm. people on Pulse Chain uh, see um, 
parameters that other people don't. And you can be an idiot and arrive here, uh, but also know more about the future of blockchain than, uh, than, than most geniuses in, in other chains. So um, I, 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 I like what you were saying. I think I, I, uh, I, it's, uh, I think we need to, to bring it back a bit, though, because I did lose you a bit halfway through that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, I'm going to have to release, I'm, I'm working on releasing like some proper documentation that people can digest. I now have a team of people that will be helping work with me. Um, some of the brightest minds are all that I know of are all trying to you know, discover, you know, I picked up where some of y'all guys left off because I can feel how you could get burnt out. Um, so I just kind of took off, took up where some of these other guys left off. And yeah, maybe some of it's a stretch, but even if 10% of it is, is correct, um, we're going to wish that we onboarded everybody. Uh, so I, uh, yeah. I, I, go ahead, go ahead. Pictures well, too, uh, man. We need pictures to onboard people. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say like, yeah, you, I uh, have that. What, what you're saying is not crazy. It's just, it's probably going to take all of us a bit to, to understand that and, and learn about it on our own time. Um, and what you're saying is, is, is probably factual. Um, but I, I would like to bring it back to Atropa, uh, and, and why, you know, the, 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 the backing of the P stables, I think the, the, the setting up collateral is actually just a, a sliver and just a, an added benefit to what's actually going to occur. I think what's really going to happen is we're going to start um, to, to get to a dollar. We're going to see the Atropa ecosystem liquidity get to 10-ish billion dollars. Like at a dollar, it's going to be around yeah. 10 billion. And so how do we keep which is obviously going to take up most of the influence when it comes to PDI. So how do we take a liquidity that's worth $10 billion, manipulate it, or uh, or solidify it enough so that we can stay at a dollar? Well, what they're doing with stay of proceedings and creating a quote-unquote production quality asset is something that's going to be very, very important when it comes to um, figuring out the math to keep that that peg, because when you if if you can imagine that you have a string of like eight tokens that they've already created, and each one of these eight tokens is all just burn liquidity, and if it's all just burn liquidity tied to each other, and then at the very tip is burn liquidity uh, towards PDI or towards Atropa. And then on the other side, it's towards a PDI or a Tropa. Then you basically just have this string of tokens. Who knows what their functions are going to be? But it's all just just stable. And if everything's just burn stable liquidity, that that makes it even thicker at at one dollar, and it makes it so that you you can't really budge that price. And so I think what they're going to end up doing is they're going to create a few tokens at the top. Uh, create them in a way that it, it mimics stay of proceedings or what they're going to do at 8k BFF and then we're just going to we're going to stay there because it's going to be pretty easy to do that for them at that point yeah Gnosis has already released they're already running this thing called super oracles um, which is like a deterministic type of thing to where they can set a price and they can peg it to anything and then you put bids in and you do certain things to where if you don't believe it's that price you have to outbid the other person so if you think it's worth less or more it kind of works like in a, in a in a cloud liquidity circumstance to where everything is all paired together but it's a clouded liquidity bubble um to where if you believe it's that value and people think it's that value, or if you don't, you have to put up value against each other. And then that's kind of how they incentivize the people in the network. So that's one thing that they've done is kind of utilize a system to where 
it's a belief mechanism and uh, you put your money where your mouth is type system. Again, that's something you have to look into. But I think Atropa, like you said, to be able to hold the peg, number one, uh, the Atropa ecosystem being layered the way that it is with the, the botting mechanics on there that have multiple use utilities. Number one is covered traffic and cover nodes, uh, which is why I believe Go, Go Pulse launches a bunch of different tokens. So depending on how many real people are utilizing the network, it actually launches more or less tokens based on that. So if any type of uh, AI or computer scanner tried to track people versus bots, they wouldn't be able to tell because Open number one has this, has had this vision to where they launch these assets to where some of them go down forever, you know, so, but it, it makes a real economy in a way to where, you know, some people do really good with their money and real smart about it, or some people will be stupid with their money and, you know, do random things. But the bots will always trade something because the way that X times Y equals K, it never goes to zero. So if somebody tried to run a scanner on, on Pulse, right, whenever this reaches or it gets to it, it wouldn't be able to know, like, what's human versus what's not. And then you cannot, the, the, one of the main reasons tokens be pegged are bots, uh, no, um, uh, more like flash loans. And we know, number one, if you try to take a flash loan out against uh, DAI itself, you only get 50, you get 66 tokens to the dollar. So you can only, you know, I think that's why DAI was so, was so sought after to begin with, because you couldn't flash loan it. But that's why they created SDI, which allows you to 20 exit. And then literally two days ago, they onboarded the ability to do that same thing with uh, with USDT and USDC. And the bots play a role in to where we know a tropa is layered all the way up. Like So Circle 2 is practically double the price of a tropa. So the bots won't have to. And it's layered all the way up to the top. So if someone tried to flash loan or tried to hurt the price, like so uh, this is a theory. So the bots would then push the price down or push the price up to a certain point if someone tries to sell so much liquidity out of uh, the PDI ecosystem. Um, they would front run them in a sense. So it's like an AMM, which we already see happening with the, the price stability module, right? So they it makes it to where no matter what, someone buying or selling, um, it's, a, it's a way for them to take a few cents in, depending on how much they're buying, um, they push the price up or down uh, to where it's uh, always going to be, you know, but the price stability module works in pennies and cents. But we do know that MakerChain is launching a token that's going to fluctuate from $0.75 cents to $1.25. Now, maybe we don't see that. Maybe it's always sold for a dollar. But those big swings that maybe we do, we do see or we don't see can make it to where they could literally help back uh, PDI in a sense as well to where if it did drop, that they would be able to then utilize that, that, that functionality to push it right back up to a dollar. Um, that's all theory. But I think that there probably will be a functionality to where if you try to sell so much liquidity, it's going to push you to a pool that is so illiquid and you're going to eat a shit ton of slippage. That's my, uh, that's, that's what I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think uh, you, I mean, you said everything good. I think that's where you lose people though, where you get smart, right? Like, um, I think the way to onboard, when we keep talking about onboarding, is literally game. Like, if we can show that there's a game in the future for this and, like, maybe see some graphics. I know that's kind of tough, right? It's not even ready right now, but that's how you get onboarding. That's how you get people to be like, oh, buy a tropa, I can get into a game early. You know what I mean? It's hard to say, like, go buy a tropa because there's a trillion tokens you're going to be able to, you know what I mean? That's, that's a tough sell, especially for I, right now in the market. Have you ever heard of a game? Yeah, there's a game called Cypher. So I was looking into some sells and buys through CowSwap, which we only know one person that usually uses CowSwap, but he was utilizing, uh, it was going in and out of Hex, and it was also buying this token called Cypher, uh, S-I-P-H-E-R, which is tied directly to some sort of a game. Um, that's, that's already downloadable, it's on Google, and uh, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, Phoenix Labs is actually special specializes in video games, so I think you're onto something with that. And Tysomni itself is a video game too, right? It's a mud or whatever. So, I mean, maybe I mean that might be you know like I, like I think a uh, a lot of this might be onboarding people that don't even know they're being onboarded. But yeah, I think, I think gaming is definitely 
a huge feature. I don't think. Hey guys, I just want to for one second, Ben. Just give me a yeah. sec. Uh, at the top there, I pinned up a message from somebody that sent me a DM. And uh, it says, who's coming to Amsterdam on June 15th for the Pulse Chain Tour? But if you guys click on this, it says that the featured speakers include Maria Rahel, the Atropa developer, yeah. along with uh, Nine Inch she founder. In the IRC not long ago. Yeah. yeah so I just wanted to let everybody know about that. If you're over in Europe, you know, it'll be in Amsterdam. Um, if you're in the U.S., that's a fun place to visit. And I, I'm going to try to get out there myself, actually, because uh, it's not too far away, and I did plan to visit Europe this summer. Oh, yeah, you're in Hong Kong, aren't you, Zach? I am in uh, Phuket, Thailand. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't it a coincidence that they, they keep giving these, like, 30-day timelines, and in 30 days, or, well, not 30 days exactly, but pretty much a month and a half, they're going to be speaking with some of the most prominent slash largest prominent uh, Pulse Chain people. Yeah, no, this is going to be awesome. huge, for sure. So I'm super excited about that, and uh, I'm going to definitely do my best to make it there. So if anybody wants to meet me out there, please do. Definitely. I think that something that everyone needs to realize is um, because this is a web and because it's the best tech that we have on Pulse Chain, um, it's just going to keep expanding to the point where nobody can really compete against it. And if you're going to try to onboard people on the outside, outside money coming into Pulse Chain, they're not going to jump into something, and, and I hate to say it, but something like a 15-year-old kid made in his mom's basement. They're going to jump into something that has been proven to have longevity. Hey. Something like, <laughs> so something like <laughs> Sunny's. And, well, even your ecosystem, whatever it is, it's, they're, they're going to... They're, like when you're putting a significant amount of money into a brand new layer one, you're not going to do that for um, something you can get on Solana. You're going to do that to get early exposure to something that you know is going to grow and uh, change the landscape and, and is already doing that. So um, like we need, so when it, the thing is, if you do this right and you start launching meme coins off of no nukes, for example, you are contributing to the growth of Atropa in a, a much larger way than you can really imagine. So if you just buy up some no nukes and start launching meme coins and start and, and direct people away from just buying Pulse and then your meme, because now you're just competing against each other and it's a stupid game that never wins, you just launch it on no nukes or you launch it on any other token in Atropa, and now all of a sudden all that outside capital is coming into the entire ecosystem, and you're just feeding it. And I think that's going to be the end game. That is, yep, I agree. I mean, there's a reason why the maker chain is launching DAOs and sub DAOs, but yeah, I think we need to build, and we have to, and it's going to have to be in a non PVP way. That's why I love what Sonny's built, and you know, his contracts are made to be, you know. Worked. And if you're benevolent in your actions, you'll break yeah. your I mean, it it exactly, exactly what you just said is, I mean, other than the meme part, is my entire ecosystem. Like, bear is mostly bear liquidity burned that just buys and sends out teddy bear. Like, 414 is the same thing, but attached to a whole bunch of burned LPs with a trope of coins that has LPs of LPs of LPs. So it's Growing all those LPs in the background, and then has eight coins in the Atropa ecosystem attached to it. Right. Um, right, and that's what Maria said. Right, build like I did, or attempt to build like I did. I think, yeah, Sunny was definitely onto something, and still is. So, like, when I when I built to support that ecosystem and and all the whole ecosystem, I I built something one that I'm barely even in, but I built something that just runs on its own, works forever, and if people want to join it, they can, right? Like People that understand the math and hold it, they're all happy, and people that want to buy and sell it, they just feed all the people that hold it, right? But all that just puts buy pressure on every other coin that it's attached to, and I can do that in ways where other people don't get that money, and that money is used for a number of things, you know, if collectively we wanted to make a token that 
all of the rewards and there was no reason for anyone to ever buy it but it just runs in the background and creates a token you could then turn that token into a, a game token and just give it to people because we'd be constantly printing it for free while raising the price of the token it rewards like that's that's the game that i saw in atropa was how to make all these lps work and like I still don't like. I still don't see any magic with the bots. I still don't see any actual AMM bots. There's front run, uh, well, not front run. Well, there are front run bots, but there's arbitrage bots, and that's just people making money. They're taking money out of the ecosystem because people don't understand slippage. But all that just feeds and feeds and feeds LPs and like production quality, burning over fifty percent of your asset before a launch. Like these are real things that moving forward in crypto will be adapted and you know you'll never play another shit coin with one lp in it definitely boom you know how boring every chain is <laughs> yeah, yeah go look at any other chain and like go look at the tokens in lps and then go to pulse chain and you'll see hundreds of tokens in these liquidity pools it's why didn't maria kind of directly tell you that there's value in creating a tax ecosystem as well that's why i think you leave that part out a lot uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, on, on camera, it was acknowledged when we spoke about it, um, over coffee for, for it never like none of the tokens are taxed. It just wasn't a uh, part of the math that was ever like, you know, thought of really. Right. So like after conversing about it and thinking about it, like it really sparked some good ideas. And, you know, a lot of that gave me the confidence. It was after that, that I came in and finished out my ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think Pulse was specifically built to pad these assets? Pulse is, is you know, uh, Pulse was built to be the most liquid crypto chain there is, and and it 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 literally probably was at launch. If it wasn't at launch, it is now. Every LP attached to Wrapped Ethereum is is here. So every LP is here. So like right off the bat, we're the most liquid chain, right? And then we built on top of that, like, you know, maybe Solana is pumping out more shit coins than that, but like overall, I don't know that there is another chain with this much like different liquidity, right? There's there's more money for sure, but like, I mean, Bitcoin obviously, right? Yeah, I'm just curious your take on that. <laughs> I mean, part of that too, like I zoom out a little bit more, right? And I think that we're, we're in the middle phases of whatever it was that RH thought of a decade ago, like when he was first doing this stuff on Bitcoin, right? Worked, and now he's just rebuilding it and doing it proper because he saw everything that was wrong with it. So, like, if Hex is the store of value, we're in the, the dollar area right now, and then. We're actually going to recreating that stable coin because our stable coin can't be based off of off the dollar because the dollar is losing value, right? It's not stable. We need something that just is like this is one and it's worldwide and that will change the world because it'll give people actual freedom in other countries and places where they don't have money like most of us that are sitting here on the but what's the most used cryptocurrency in the world right now? By far. I mean, I would guess it's Bitcoin, but Bitcoin. I, would be guessing. I don't actually know. So it's not Bitcoin. It's Tether, USDT. And the reason it's saving people's lives around the world is because they earn money in their local currency. And instead of, you know, putting into Bitcoin, which, which is probably a decent move, but instead of throwing it into a speculative asset, they have faith in the USDT team that they are uh, putting their money into something that is just pegged to a US dollar rather than a normal US dollar. And so the USDT team is actually only a team of like 10 guys. And, and they make somewhere between 5 to $6 billion uh, per year from, from, these, these, from everybody using their stablecoin. And so we, we can't have that in crypto. You, you just can't have that kind of centralization of 
less than 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 ten people uh, that control the world's uh, you know one of the world's most prominent stable coins, and so um, doing it this way, we're extre- We're, we're going to be. This is like the the like you actually mentioned earlier, Sonny, where it's fixed income where you start from the the dollar from PDI, and then you just have an entire economy. Uh, that backs it and it's uh it's it's how we've always done things which is really cool but now it's just on code and it has no middlemen and it's the first time we've ever done this and every time i think about this in depth it 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 feels so freaking weird to to be at this stage and the fact that we're early investors into it um really really weird i i it's almost uh it, it shouldn't be true. <laughs> because even if we're the earliest investors, we're not majority in uh, PDI or USDC. And if we do, we're kind of idiots because we'd make more money elsewhere in the ecosystem. And it's designed that way, where uh, you leave your capital to get more capital by buying into something a bit more speculative that they then pair to something else and it makes it so it's uh, a steady ecosystem, zero uh, central ownership. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I dropped a, there's a couple of things that just dropped uh, that shows, I don't know, it was a few days ago, where I don't, I don't know if it was a glitch in the matrix or what, <clears throat> but USDT went from $180 billion to $3 billion of the actual market, and then it rose right back up. I posted it. I found that on, De- on DeFi Llama, like the value of all the stables, and then uh, I do know USDT is kind of rebranding uh, on the ton, and they're also going to be launching another type of stable called X- XAUT that is going to be backed by gold. So I don't know what ha- I, like could have just been a glitch in the, you know, the glitch that why track like that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I'm doing, yeah, then with that kind of power is scary, but it, it might have been some other power <laughs> showing them that, you know, you don't hold that much power, you know, so very interesting to, uh, whenever I stumbled across that. I'm, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta go guys, but it was, it was nice talking to everyone. The, the one thing I'll leave you with is take the time to learn about this because, and it's going to suck because, uh, You'll, you'll kind of be the only one in your network that grasps the severity and the, the magnitude of, of what's happening here. But um, learn about it because it, it could be the most important thing you do ever. So I'll leave you with that and, and have a good night, everyone. Is that Ben? Take yeah. it easy, Ben. See you next week. Yeah, cheers, Ben. I, uh, I'll add to that too that you realize a lot of these spaces and it's hard to onboard. It's hard to teach people because you can tell everything, you know, straight to their face and they just don't get it. But like most of us that are here, most of us are talking about this. You'll notice most of us are developers or most of us have been in and reading blockchain for a long time. So it's, it's why we see it. Uh, So maybe it'd be a good chance uh, if anybody is in the space right now and you may have some questions, um, I would encourage anybody to request the mic and, you know, come and share your opinions or thoughts, your feelings, uh, any questions you may have about what's going on, because it's definitely confusing for many people that I talk to. Honestly, when I try to onboard people, um, I kind of just stick to the PDI theory, right? Because people know what DAI is, at least, you know, my, my buddies that were using Ethereum and Binance and things like that years ago. Uh, so yeah, telling them, you know, that the, the, there's a copy of die on pulse chain, it's got the same contract address and it's already done 5,000 X on its way to a dollar. You know, they're just like, where do I, you know, where do I put my money? Basically, how do I give it to you? Um, so yeah, I mean, if anybody has any questions, yeah, feel free to please request the mic and we can continue this conversation, uh, as long as we want, but yeah, hopefully doesn't seem like anybody has questions, but yeah, I guess uh, some people are kind of shy, I guess. Oh, people <laughs> have questions. I don't, I don't think they know how to um, 
approach them now. Quite possibly, yeah. People just want to ape something. <laughs> exactly. It's just yeah. Just... And that, that's how you that's how you onboard people though. It's like you have to tell them what they ape essentially. That's why I was saying like with the video game, if you if you can kind of show some of the plebs, all right, like some of just the people that want to park money places. Right. Hey, there's a video game behind this. They'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, let me get in. And that's what I was saying earlier. Um, but without that, it's. I mean, I, I, try, I like, think I'm I in, think I'm we should all. If we have if we have P die and we have our bags set in P die, I think we should all try to pump BFF honestly, so we can get to that eight k. The Dude. the debt is going <laughs> to give us a liquidity disbursement. Like there's like two point four million dollars that's going to be added in liquidity. I think that's going to be the sum total of what they have left in BFF. Um, but that'll just be. Huge. What do we have to do? We just got to get BFF. I need to know BFF to the eight k price. That that's our target price. And then the debt is going to add uh, two point four million dollars in liquidity to the P stables and other tokens. Um, and yeah, so basically it'll stabilize BFF at that price and that'll be kind of like a new floor so people that are coming in it'll basically rise off of there you know anybody that tries to dump it basically won't affect the price too much because of all the, the thick yeah. liquidity pools that it has it'll kind of uh, pump it back up after a big sell well it's the liquidity adding for yeah, some no, sellers no. but it's also the hey if you don't like a lot of people like a lot of my buddies will sit there and they call me dumb they're like but Peter's not pegging it's not gonna go to dollar da, 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 da. so like if you want to show people like hey this can happen we have to do the BFF play first because without that, we all just look like, you know, conspiracy people. And, you know, we're just hoping that this dev pumps our bags. Essentially, that's what we look like. So if we can get BFF to that point and then prove people wrong. Like we can show them the mechanisms of how that works and what is possible on a smaller scale. Then we can actually do it on a bigger scale and have people believe in that. Because without BFF first, we don't get to PDI. So I don't know why we keep looking at PDI. We need to look at what's closer to us, not down the road. Right, and then once BFF is tied to the P stables, like when we get to AK, the BFF price will rise in value as P die and all the other P stables get to their dollar point. Um, and then you know we have all the the whatever, all the little things coming inside the Sonomia. We have really not much idea about yet, but that's, that's oh, how the P die kicker has four four one dollar like four little symbols that look like a dollar. So, okay. Oh, I do hold some of it. I was like, that's interesting. Mm. Maybe it's yeah. yeah. I mean, we get to a million dollars. All the piece and and thinks that's yeah. crazy. But yeah. if we <laughs> if we inject that much liquidity right. and get to a dollar on the stables, I mean, it's one hundred percent possible. And then there's only so many people that are going to hold BFF to a million. So, well, I think yeah, it's definitely one of the most bullish tokens in the ecosystem. I mean, the dev has really been trying to push people to to see it. You know, especially since um, I think like January is when it really started to pop off. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's like there's a really big, it's a really big deal basically to kind of prove this method of stabilization. Um, and I just really hope everybody understands that. I mean, I want to see it just for myself, like not even to prove other people wrong. I want to make sure that we're not all crazy, right? Like I want to see the BFF pay. I want to see it get K. I want to see the devs step in and do what they say. You know, because without that, why are we? Why are we even doing this? Yep, and it seems like they're on track, you know, like every time, you know, we, we had, we saw those tokens getting launched with BFF, I think that was just, you know, to try to pump the price up a lot, I think we got to like 6k, um, which I mean, obviously got shot down with the market and everything like that, but um, it just goes to show the dev is still, tr like, attempting to, you know, see this goal through, um, I don't think anything's changed on that front. Yeah, damn, I don't know if I looked into that enough. So if you want to check it out, actually, we have a really fucking awesome website. Um, there, there's a person in the community that made it for us. He did it completely for free. Um, it, it is bffonpulsechain.com. And there's a really cool liquidity map on the website. And it shows you basically all the different pairings. And uh, the guy created it in a really cool way where it looks like BFF is like a big island. And there's, there's all, the, all these other islands attached to it. It looks like a game, basically. It's pretty, really cool. Um, and there's what's it called? BFF? BFF on pulsechain.com. Yeah. And uh, there's okay. going to be like, a, there's a blog page where me and a few other guys have written like, um, you know, our, our viewpoints about BFF and what it symbolizes and things like that. Um, it's really, really cool website, honestly, and everybody should check it out. And I love the symbology aspect to a lot of this stuff. I feel like it's the breadcrumbs <laughs> that could mean the most. 
But yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna read this. Thanks, man. Hit below if anybody wanted to check it out. Yeah, I'm trying to find it so I can pin it. There it is. Okay. So yeah, this uh, is such a cool website. I pinned the website to the top, guys. If anybody wants to go check it out, it should appear in just a second. Somebody requested this week, uh, Crypto Roofer. What's going on? Do you have any questions? Yeah, does anybody have any thoughts on, um, you know, the PUSDT and how closely correlated it is to PDI, but the fact that it's like half price? Um, like any, any thoughts on that? Uh, if that's a smart play, if it's... I think it's just hard to follow, bro. I think it's just bonded with the Tropa and everything so heavy that it's going to follow. Um, yeah. Yeah, so when the dev talks about the P-stables, right, the P-stables are the three main ones, right, PDI, PUSDC, and PUSDT, and they're, they're all tied to the Atropa ecosystem, and I believe the dev thinks that they're all going to a dollar, and so if you find one that's less, you know, than the others, obviously it could be a good, a good play there, because, you know, that's, that's the end goal. Yeah, I've kind of I've allocated... A considerable portion of my bag to it just because it seems like it's highly correlated and it's yeah it's pretty much 50 percent off <laughs> there's just a little risk with that right so like there's admin keys with usdc and usdt so yeah. they could potentially turn those off um and not make them like tradable or whatever uh so that's just that's the only thing you can sue though if, if they turn that off so you can start a case and uh, it's not something that you would want to have to have like do but it is a possibility that if they turn them off, we could go soup. Right. Right on. Appreciate it. Also, USDT, the copy, is tied to the Antisa uh, ecosystem. So that's another thing, too. Like, there's leverages on USDT. There's not necessarily direct leverages with USDC, but with the USDT, you have Antisa and then Lily's token. So you can, like, leverage off into those. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. It branches off into its own little thing. Mm -hmm. Mantis has actually been outperforming USD. So like USDT, when it was pumping, Mantisa was following in the dollar terms, but it was crashing versus USDT. And then as soon as USDT started to go down, uh, the Mantisa dollar price started to go down, but it started to do way better than the USDT because there wasn't any sellers. Um, and that's how you, know, you outperform the stables. You get into them um, with more lot of holders. Uh, that's a steady puffer, uh, steady made a made a mind map uh, mm -hmm. of that, and it kind of shows how. It now I remember that now. Yeah, uh -huh. and then when you get a bunch of holders in Mantisa, and then people start to try to sell, like so, say you get like a hundred new people in Mantisa, and then when Mantisa pumps, you see them sell down. So like, Hart's law works perfect if there's no sellers. So if if you see a bunch of people trying to sell Mantisa down, then you can hop into Lilies, and then if there's not a lot of holders in Lilies, then Lilies can outperform Mantisa, which then in turn outperforms the USDT. So, like, the further you get into that web, the less real holders there are, and then that way you can, you know, not worry about the sellers. So nice. I think we got another speaker up here. Red Wolf, did you want to say something? I had to mute your mic because somebody else is speaking, but go ahead. Yeah, that's cool, man. Thanks. Uh, could you talk about dysnomia? I've heard you talk about it a little bit before, but I have no idea what it is. How is that connected to BFF and Atropa and all this stuff? So dysnomia is something that the dev is working on currently and has been for a while. Um, it's supposed to be what they call a layer two, and what that means, I'm not really sure yet because we're not sure if it's like a layer two, like Arbitrum, or if it's just something that sits on top of the blockchain or whatever. Um, but anyways, dysnomia, there's going to be a lot of different aspects to it, right? There's going to be like a communication layer where you're going to be able to talk to people. It's going to be kind of like a, it has a lot to do with privacy and encryption, right? And being able, being able to uh, move away from our IRC chat and our Telegram chat and be able to talk to people um, in our ecosystem uh, without it ever being able to be taken down. Uh, that's one of the main focuses, I believe. And then also dysnomia was, is talked about as being a game, right? Um, a game similar to this old game called Discworld Mud, which is like a text-based MMORPG game. 
there's there's tokens that have been created in the ecosystem um, that are going to be able to be utilized inside the game. Will give your character some kind of functionality. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot that goes into it. Uh, if you're curious to learn more about what dysnomia may be, um, I would go to the Telegram channel where we can read what goes on inside the IRC um, and use the little finder tool like the search button and type in dysnomia into the search and you'll be able to see all the times that the dev mentions it um, in the IRC chat. And there's going to be a lot that you probably don't understand, uh, and that's, you know, the majority of us. But it'll give you kind of like a good foundation. Um, and then also maybe pro probably watch the previous videos. They did go into a bit about dysnomia in those, in those videos in Zurich where they had a meetup recently. Zurich, huh? Yeah, the last meetup was in Zurich. I think it was just like a few weeks ago, and it was recorded on video. There's three different videos, um, and they're on YouTube now. That's where Hopper is from. Hopper. Yep, and apparently the next meetup is going to be in Amsterdam. So if anybody wants to meet out there, the dev is going to be presenting at the Pulse Chain Tour, which is sweet. Hey, uh, uh, isn't that um, Dysnomia the name of a moon that NASA found in like 2000s, early 2000s? It could be. Yeah, two thousand five. It was yeah. It was a, it was the moon. Or it was a moon. They they found something called Eris, which was a moon. And then around that the Eris, there was another moon that they found that was called yeah. They ended up dubbing it Insomnia, which we could have been working at NASA at the time when this was found, and that might be some of the uh, reasoning for the name. Hey, Rich, you got a question, bud? Yeah, what is your guys' predi uh, best prediction for the pegging of P die to $1? Uh, so, actually, I don't know if anybody in here saw my post about this uh, new Pulse Predictions um, protocol that's getting launched, but I'm actually going to be making a prediction about PDI. Um, and it, basically what this website is, it's like a betting platform where PVP, like a person versus person, you can basically say, like, I believe PDI will go to a dollar by, you know, the end of the year. And, you know, you can say, I got a thousand dollars that says so. And anybody else can say, okay, you know, I'll take you up on that bet. And yeah, so basically I'm, I'm going to make a bet and put it on that protocol yep. soon. I think I'm, just, I'm, I think I'm going to try to say that PDI will maybe, maybe go to a dollar by like the end of November, maybe. That's kind of like maybe where, where I'll place my bet. But uh, I don't know. I'm curious to hear what anybody else thinks. That's the exact type of market that the fixed Oracle prices work on, on, uh, the prediction market is the first thing, like the consensus scheme, the launch gnosis as X die first. Um, yeah, there was actually a predictions market, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how they run their uh, their fixed price nodes in that same sort of fashion. I think it was PLS Speak, might have been the, the name of it. Yes, PLS Speak. I sacrificed for that shit, man. Where is it? Yeah, he's the smartest, he's like, out of everyone that I spoke to with before they launched. Um, and I promoted uh, he mike was definitely above and beyond um someone that could out speak me i mean he yeah he's a great dude and i think that they've been waiting to launch um they were saying they were waiting for something to peg or it was for a dollar for a stable coin or for fashion like another oracle to launch but yeah that's definitely and it like it seemingly seems sounds a hell of a lot like the gnosis um Prediction model that they use for the fixed price levels. Yeah, no, that definitely is interesting. But yeah, so Rich, I th I'm gonna I'm gonna place a bet in the next couple of days, I believe, when that protocol launches. Uh, P to a dollar by end of November. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet you on that, bro, and I'm gonna say uh, next year. Next year, like this time. Mm -hmm. Next. Don't you split like if you're right. Sorry, no, you're good. I was gonna say uh, like something is like if you get right, you get like an for it. What if the Richard Hart case gets dropped in October and we moon? <laughs> so that is November first trend. So when? Oh, it's going in November. It's gonna happen before they he's due for court. Yeah. 
So you say before he's due for court, we get valid P.I.? No, like right around that time. All right. No, right around November. Let's fucking go. How about Fanny? He, he, he's, not, he's not told that he's not supposed to show up, but I bet you he shows up and then says what's well, game because everything's new. Man, like I said, we need BFF first, but anyways, y'all boys, I gotta go. It's been lovely talking to y'all. See y'all boys next week, man. See y'all right. See you later, man. Yeah, I love this website. I'm definitely going to start promoting it. I just had no idea about BFF. I had no clue. Maybe I just, yeah. Bro, BFF, that the okay. light, man. That the light. <laughs> yeah, the dev talks a lot about BFF in the chat. Or at least they did a, long, a while ago, but... Yeah, the, the mission is still to get to 8K, then we get a ton of all the BFF that they hold, right? I think they have like 175 BFF tokens. Um, those all get added to LP after we get to 8K. Yeah, okay. This is awesome. Uh, Tommy, I think you're a speaker up here now. Yeah, so if, do you have any questions at all, Tommy? I saw you come up here. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I was just going to ask if anyone knew where to get to buy the P. Baker copy. Uh, we can't seem to buy it on FTX Exchange or Pateus. Um, I'm not sure about Pateus, but uh, have you used PulseX yet? Uh, yeah, I can, um, I'm not sure why it doesn't work, but every time I try and buy the P. Baker copy, it, uh, nothing shows up. I use Go Pulse, so I'll go, like, I can go to Go Pulse and then, you know, make sure I add it to my wallet through Go Pulse and then uh, that's where I was able to buy. You have to make sure it's the right contract and stuff like that, too. So you just got to be, because some of you know, it's not just going to be called P Maker, but on a, on their website, they do have the P tokens listed and you can click on it and you can make sure that it's fine the right, right asset. Yeah, so it's the same exact contract address as Maker on Ethereum, so you can literally copy that uh, and then put it in the Pulse X. And also make sure you're on the correct uh, version, either V1 or V2. Um, there's going to be you know, either more or less liquidity based upon which one you're on. But yeah, if anybody else wants to come up and speak, if anybody has any questions, opinions, or wants to share anything, um, even you guys, uh, Pulse and Sunny, um, if you guys want to share anything else before we go, um, please do so. Um, we can keep going if people want to chat, but uh, it seems like it's kind of winding down a bit now. I was going to say, yeah, if you're still having trouble buying that asset, bro, just reach out through a DM. Uh, I'll, I'll do what I can to help you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Cool, guys. Well, I think it's been a good space. Uh, we did it for a couple hours, and we'll do these every week. Um, I don't have a problem so far uh, setting my schedule this way. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you guys in the Telegram chats.